Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the polar form of complex numbers. Now, let's go ahead before we dive into the polar form of complex numbers, let's just make sure that we're absolutely certain of what our Cartesian form of Z looks like in terms of its particular components as a vector. So let's go ahead and take a look at Z, which is equal to 2 plus 2i. And if we were to go ahead and graph that on the argon diagram, we would have the, orig uh, the tail of the vector at the origin and going to 2 comma 2, which of course is going to be representing the real part and the imaginary part of that particular complex number. Now, in previous exercises, we've looked at the modulus of this vector, or the magnitude of the vector, and what we know for a fact is that this particular vector is going to have the modulus of 2 square root of 2. Now, we said that that was going to be an important characteristic because, of course, our interpretation as a complex number is going to be a vector, and a vector has a magnitude or a length as well as a direction. So the next thing that we need to go ahead and take a look at is what is the argument of z? And the argument of z is actually going to be representing the direction as an angle. So if we go ahead and just take a look at this, again, this is just going to be a right triangle. And in order for us to find the angle, we can just go ahead and take a look at the values of a and b. And we know that we can then go ahead and use the tangent function to determine what that angle is. So the angle, or what will be more appropriately called for complex numbers, the argument of z, is going to be simply the inverse tangent of b over a. So in this case here, we have the inverse tangent of 2 over 2. The inverse tangent of 1 is, of course, 45 degrees. Now, what we're going to have to do then is we're going to have to take a look at the information that was gathered by the fact that we are representing a complex number as a vector and we're going to take the modulus as well as the argument and change the form of the vector or of the complex number into what is called the polar form of the complex number. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to see also that these two forms, even though they look different, are equivalent to each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. How do we go ahead and change the Cartesian form of a complex number into its associated polar form? Now, we already said that we have the modulus of the, of the complex number as well as the angle. And so what that means then is we can actually go ahead and use trigonometry now to say that the cosine of theta is just going to be equal to a over the modulus of z and the sine of theta is going to be equal to b divided by the modulus of z. That means then that a is going to be equal to the modulus of z times it by the cosine of theta and b is going to be equal to the modulus of z times it by the sine of theta. So what we know now is that being that we had the Cartesian form of a plus bi, we can now go ahead and substitute these particular values for a and b to come up with the modulus of z cosine theta plus i times it by the modulus of z sine theta. Now, if we go ahead and just associate r as the modulus of z, then I can simply write any complex number as r cosine theta plus i r sine theta, and if I factor out the r, I come up with cosine theta plus i sine theta. What we're going to do now is we're going to abridge that form to say cis theta, that is cosine i sine theta. Okay, so that's what r cis theta is going to represent. It is going to represent the polar form of any complex number. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this particular example that we're talking about here. We said that z is going to be 2 plus 2i because that again is the Cartesian form of our complex number. We know that the modulus is going to be the square root of 2 square root of 2, and we're going to associate that with the value r. And we also know that the argument of z is going to be equal to 45 degrees. Therefore, what we know is that we can actually write this Cartesian form of the, of the complex number in its associated polar form 
by substituting this here, the modulus of z, for r and theta for, the, uh, for, the, for the 45 degrees for theta. Now, look at this. This 2 plus 2i, that's exactly the same thing as 2 times the square root of 2 times the bisect is 45 degrees. Now, are we actually sure that that's actually equivalent? What we can do is we can just go ahead and expand that and say 2 square root of 2 times it by the quantity of cosine 45 degrees plus i sine 45 degrees because that's what cis 45 degrees represents. We know that the cosine of 45 degrees as well as the sine of 45 degrees is 1 over root 2. If I distribute 2 root 2 into this particular uh, bracket here, we come up with, of course, 2 plus 2i. So what we know is that this and this are exactly the same, just different forms. Okay, so let's wrap up again. What we need to do is once we know that we can associate a vector in, two, in the Arden diagram to represent a complex number, we can then go ahead and take the modulus, we can determine the modulus of that particular vector as well as its direction and associate the modulus with R and associate the argument with theta. Once we do that, then we can go ahead and say that the z, which is a plus b i in Cartesian form, is going to have an equivalent polar form of r cis theta. Being that we know what r as well as theta is, we can go ahead and come out with the associated polar form. Now the other thing that we need to be able to do in this particular unit of our section of study is to just make sure that we can go from the Cartesian form to the polar form and also go from the polar form back to the Cartesian form. It's just going to be very important that we see the relationship between those two and make sure that we can come up with equivalency. Okay, and we've shown some of that here as well. So we'll take a look at some of these problems uh, in class the next time that we meet. Let's see how you do with converting Cartesian forms of complex numbers to polar forms and vice versa. See you next time. Bye-bye.